In order to get enough clients and to have plenty of uh, business, uh, marketing is required. Uh, have you noticed? <laughs> Uh, if you are able to have enough uh, business clients, customers without doing marketing, then you're uh, ex ex extremely rare. Uh, it happens, but it's very rare, and it's not something that I uh, recommend. Uh, I myself, uh, just like most business owners, need to do quite a bit of marketing. But the problem with marketing for many of us who are more heart-based uh, or more like we want to live with more spiritual values, is that it feels wrong to us um, in various ways. But today I want to talk about the feeling of marketing is like putting stuff online with, uh, like on social media, always with an agenda that, oh, I am giving you this content so that uh, you will become my client. I, I am posting this uh, interesting article, this video, this image, whatever it is, so that I can get more followers. Um, I am, uh, you know, I want you to join my email list. So I'm going to give you this, uh, what some people call ethical bribe, which is a very funny and <laughs> cynical term. Um, I'm going to give you this opt-in freebie so that you'll, you'll want to join my list. And why do you want to join my list? Well, I'm telling you, it's, you know, I think supposedly it's it's for your own good. It's because I am a generous person, but really, honestly, it's because I want to get you as a client or as a customer or for you to spread the word about me. So there's this agenda laden set of actions that we call marketing that it, it's not that any one of those actions is wrong. Obviously, we need clients and customers. Obviously, we hope that people will find our content interesting and engage with it and follow us. Obviously, we want people to join our email list so that they can hear about our services and products and, serv and programs every now and then. Yes, none of those things are bad. But it's the agenda, it's the constant um, need to have an agenda behind everything we do in our business that I think is, it creates a kind of forcefulness or shall I say, lack of love that we don't really like. So what's the solution? Well, let me share with you kind of what I've come up with. And I look forward to seeing if you wanna share uh, what, what works for you below. So essentially, instead of the agenda, I say hold loosely to that idea. It's not that we have zero agenda because that would be unrealistic. That would be not human. <laughs> of course, when we start creating content or sending out an email newsletter or reaching out to a prospective colleague or prospective client, it's natural to have hope that oh, may, perhaps this will lead to uh, the growing of my business. Perhaps this will lead to me being able to serve that person with the, the work that I so love to do and to be able to have a sustainable livelihood. It's natural, and I think it's fine to have those hopes. And yet, I say hold loosely. Whenever we take action in our marketing, hold loosely to that agenda. Uh, to that hope or to have that hope, but don't attach it to the fact that, well, this action will be successful if that hope is realized. Because that's where wrongdoing begins. That's where, you know, people, I've, I've heard someone say, George, I don't care about funnels or whatever, as long as it gets results, what's the matter about it? Okay, the person who's saying that is not, is not, has a little bit of a blind spot or maybe a big blind spot in that in life, we experience deep happiness and fulfillment when we enjoy the process itself, when we are aligned with our between our values and the action itself. The alignment is what creates deep fulfillment and the outcome or the results are a bonus. The outcome or the results, the happy happiness of getting a new client or uh, making some money is a shallow happiness 
it of course is required to have a livelihood. Of course, I understand. But compared to witnessing ourselves uh, living out our purpose, no matter what the result is, and in fact, being able to enjoy the action because of um, the expression of our soul, like that is deep happiness. That is like the, to focus on that and to really observe and enjoy that. And I purposely emphasize enjoy with a hyphen in the middle, E-N hyphen J-O-Y. You know, instead of, instead of enlightenment, I try to enlighten each moment because that's much more meaningful to me and much more doable. I can, I can pay attention to this moment and see what kind of uh, deeper values I bring into this moment. So by doing this, we then experience a deeper happiness that allows us to keep doing these so-called marketing tasks. And by continuing to, for example, creating content authentically and consistently, right? Because we are enjoying the process itself. We create consistently. We um, do our market research consistently by talking to our audience and um, leaning into our genuine care and curiosity about them. And so therefore hearing what they're wanting and needing at this time, and therefore, therefore uh, with care and with love, shape our offerings and the description of our offerings to meet the audience where they're at, to fulfill the wants of the people we're talking to right by doing by doing this stuff consistently guess what we become more excellent at it and by becoming more excellent at something it's obvious that you get more results with it as a natural byproduct of the the care we give to the process itself so i say authentic marketing is about holding loosely to the agenda and holding fast to our values. Because by showing up day after day, expressing our values of, what are your values? You can comment below if you wish to, you know, inspire us and share with us and you'll find kindred spirits here. But my values are generosity, authenticity, um, service to the whole, um, creative fitness. So practicing my own creative fitness, because I, as I always <laughs> like to remind you, which is the truth of my experience, I did not feel like starting this video. I, I show up every Friday at 2 p.m. my time to make a Facebook Live. This is some of you are watching this elsewhere on YouTube or elsewhere. Every single Friday, except during my content sabbatical weeks, which I take once every four to five weeks, I take a, a week off of content. But I show up consistently, not because I think I'm so good looking and have so smart things to say. No, I show up because I, I want to exercise my creativity fitness. And I want to exercise and lean into again, my care for my audience. And therefore, the, 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 the care bubbles up into a desire to serve them to serve you. And by doing so, I, I witness and grateful for this opportunity to try to be generous with my energy and with my, you know, with what I've learned and with my, with my presence, uh, even when I don't feel like it, like right now. Um, I don't, as I said before, I don't, I never feel like starting my videos, but, you know, once I'm a couple minutes into it, now I'm feeling more of, of, of the connection to um, my ideal audience in my, in my mind and heart. I can imagine, I can literally picture some of you watching this, um, and I am having much more uh, enjoyment of the process. When I'm writing, uh, writing is harder for me than making videos, so it can take me 15 minutes, 30 minutes of um, being patient with myself, uh, of, 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 of ignoring my doubts and my blocks, uh, of, of, you know, being kind to them, but setting them aside and continuing to try, to try, to try until I find some flow. And again, and until I find that uh, re-connection uh, with the care I have for my audience and for my own growth. And that intersection, I always talk about that intersection between um, 
the care I have for my own exploration and growth and the care I have for my audience and humanity as a whole, my service to, to humanity, that intersection is authentic marketing. So, so back to this idea of, you know, I see uh, some marketers, when they, whenever they post content, every piece of content has a call to action. Oh, this piece of content better get people onto my email list. And then the farm email list, they better than buy something or just this funnel idea where, you know, it's like you look at every uh, audience member as a potential dollar or thousand dollars or a hundred thousand, whatever. And it's like, you know, lifetime value and all that stuff. It's like this funnel is so why I feel so uncomfortable with it. It's completely agenda driven and it's a fixation. It's a, um, a myopic fixation with profit and a therefore a disconnection from the person's heart. I think funnel people who use funnels are not evil people. No, they're just um, temporarily focused, hyper focused on this one thing, which might be causing a disconnection from their heart. And I, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I wonder if they're deeply happy as a result of that or are they postponing their happiness to say no george to stop talking about happiness it's gonna make make money got to get a business system going got to get this money making engine going and then i can be happily happily hanging out with my family george that's what happiness is having a hang out with family going on vacation doing my hobbies yeah of course obviously who doesn't want to do that uh, and those things are enjoyable those things do make us happy and yet if we are postponing the if we're postponing the expression of our deepest values so that we can express them later, oh, right now I'm working. Working doesn't have anything to do with values. It's just making sure my funnel's working great, optimizing my you know, sales pipeline and you know, conversion rate optimization and making sure it's all humming. Let's just be analytical and be, be just focused on that. And then we can go be happy later. This is personal time is happy. What? Why? I mean... If, if it were true, right, that you could just be hyper-focused for a year and then be happy, deeply happy for the rest of your life as you retired, then okay, wonderful. But is that really true? Has that really worked for you <laughs> or, or anybody? We, we occasionally hear, which is what we're being marketed to, we occasionally hear the, those success stories of, oh, I joined so-and-so program, or I'm teaching this program because I was able to retire at, you know, uh, 14 years old by spending a year with my system you too can retire early and therefore do whatever you want for the rest of your life we occasionally hear stories like that and i don't know whether those stories are true or not or how what they're leaving out okay oh earn this passive income you know passive income right it sounds good, so great where i'm why would i want to work for money when i can go live out my values and be deeply happy well the truth of the matter is 90, I would say probably at more than 99% of us can't just be working for a year or even 10 years. We might need to be working for 10, 20, 30 years before we can actually retire and not have to work anymore for money, right? And so my question is during even those, 10, if, if, if you're a genius and you could do it in five years, even during those five years, my gosh, if you're a super genius and you could do it in one year, here's my question. Even during that one year of being a super genius and being able to create a passive income and what is happening in that one year? Are you just negating your values and go, I'm just going to make money, make money, make money. And do you even know if you're going to survive that year? Really, physically speaking, literally. Or even if you do survive that year, will you look back at that one year as, wow, now that I'm so-called retired, I wish I had put in my values in that year of work so that because knowing, here's the thing, how we work, not only does that affect our health, our deep happiness, and our family, because they watch us work or the friends around us, but it also affects our clients, our customers, our audience, and the world when they see how we work, how we show up with our energy, people emulate other people that they respect particularly. So as somebody who has even a single email subscriber or even a, a single social media 
fan. If you do, that means at least one person respects you to follow you, which means you are affecting that person's understanding of what is how to live well, essentially. We are being shaped our definition of success and what do we do on a day-to-day -day basis and what is the quote-unquote right way to live or what is a, a joyful way. We are being shaped by the people we follow on social media and on email newsletters and elsewhere, right? So we want those people to hopefully express to us values that we that bring us back home to say, yes, that is how I want uh, that is the kind of world I want to create, to have those values expanded out and actually create a more beautiful world. So back to this authentic marketing thing. When I make a post, I don't care if, again, like I said in the beginning, I have hope that, okay, hope, hopefully this post, remember that my, my, my conscious agenda is when I make a, when I, when I create content, Am I authentically exploring my experience? And am I authentically leaning into my heart of service for my audience? If I can do that Venn diagram, that intersection in the middle, of authentic exploration and authentic generosity, then I know I've, I've succeeded with that piece of content. And yes, of course, I have a hope, a secondary hope that it I can see that it makes a difference to people and that makes me feel good that I'm, I am making a difference and a tertiary hope that maybe they'll decide to follow me further and eventually that may lead to a, a working relationship with them if, if it's right. But you see the, the primary hope, the, the primary agenda is, am I expressing my values? And if that agenda is met, then I feel good about that piece of content. And the same thing, when I launch a course or when I announce my services or programs, I know it's so natural to get, go, George, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to announce to people that I'm available for clients now and, and I'll know that this is successful, that people sign up to work with me. I, 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 that makes sense. But let me invite you to shift that agenda to be your secondary or maybe tertiary agenda and may, may, may try on the primary agenda, the focus you have, I'm going to now announce my services and my products. I'm going to now let people know that I'm available for, for hire. Not, perhaps the primary agenda can be, let me talk about my work with as much genuine, authentic, you know, with, with as much authenticity, honesty about my work and genuine excitement of serving the, the people that I can work with. Remember, authentic marketing authentic exploration of your experience, being honest about it, and being honest about your excitement about it. And, and, and also may that message itself, even if they don't hire you, even if a hundred people read your email or your, your, your announcement about your services and none of them hire you, my question is, will that message have made a bit of a positive impact on their day or a big positive impact? I don't know. So, this is what I mean, because the reality is, okay, 100 people read your, uh, your message, your invitation to work with you, and you know, maybe one of them will work with you immediately. Like you, you, can, you can connect the fact that I posted or I emailed that announcement, and I got one client, 10 clients, 20 new clients. You can connect. That's wonderful. Again, let that be a secondary agenda. But the primary agenda is, well, even if 20 people out of 100 work with you based on that message, what about the other 80 people? Do you just look at them and go, pfft? Yeah, they don't they don't really know what they need or don't need. They the, the tire kick well, really is that how how we're going to relate to these 80 people or 99 people who don't sign up right now that we can connect between the message and the sign up time? You see what I mean? Or even a hundred people don't sign up. Are you going to be discouraged and go, I, I'm gonna quit? This is the problem. This is why most businesses do not sustain. This is why most solopreneurs don't keep going long enough to become excellent at what they do and therefore and at, at their marketing and therefore without being excellent results are hard still so if you can even when you try to sell something even when you make an offer 
that you know is trying to get people to sign up may you bring to it the primary agenda of how can i express my values in this action in the message and if i've done that that's a successful action and if people sign up wow wonderful amazing but i know if i keep doing it if i keep practicing i'm going to get better at expressing this i'm going to get um, and i'm going to build more trust with my audience and therefore not surprisingly people will sign up more and more over the over the months and over the years i hope that this is helpful and thank you for joining me on this journey of all of us practicing with expressing our values at work and in our marketing because we don't know how long we're going to be doing this right before we have passive income and retire i'm planning to do this until the day i can't next 30 years 40 years i don't know i'm i'm happy to cuz i i this is a stage for me for personal growth every time i work every time i create content or create an offer prepare something for my clients fall all of it is a stage for me for personal growth. So why would I resent this or avoid this? I don't. I lean into it. So I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing if, if this helps you as well, if you'd like. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.